go to a reference habitat next door, to the wildland next door, and perform in the same way. That is, this, the ecosystems next door are providing these gifts, these ecological gifts. They're storing water, they're cycling nutrients, they're sequestering carbon, they're supporting habitat. So the donut, you can say, is a goal for where we want to get to meet the needs of all within the means of the living planet. Janine's work teaches us, and this is how the planet works. Can we learn from the best designers who've been around for millennia? And circular economy, to me, is one of the most powerful methodologies for getting there. We need to go from a degenerative system that we know we've inherited to regenerative by design. And these circular loops that Andrew was showing are, are a beautiful design print for us to start to understand, regenerate nature, circulate technical materials, and that's how we re-educate ourselves. So I see them as profoundly connected, and I talk about them all together at the same time. Mm -hmm. Different people will find different ones powerful as an entry point, but I hope as they enter, they discover these and many other ideas that are interconnected. And what would be your take on that, Janine? Absolutely, it's a, these are portals people enter to find the same thing, which is a vision of a world that works for all. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the living world is at the center of many of our ideas, I think. Um, but biomimicry for me is kind of like the how. Uh -huh. The how to do that. Yes. So if you're, you know, if you're looking at a world, at a city that works for all, for instance, um, and that has circular uh, material flows and energy flows, you can't go to any model better than an ecosystem for yes. that. Yes. So what we've been what we've been working with for about uh, over ten years now. Um, and some of the most exciting work that we do is to say that any developer developing, whether it's a, it's a building and a site or a factory or a corporate headquarters, city block, city, that that developer should be able to go to a reference habitat next door, to the wildland next door, and perform in the same way. That is, this, the ecosystems next door are providing these gifts, these ecological gifts. They're storing water. They're cycling nutrients. They're sequestering carbon. They're supporting habitat. So we actually get quantities. I mean, this is where the how comes in. We actually get quantities and we say, per hectare, this development that you're on, you should be able to store this much water this much carbon, support this much habitat, build this much soil, block this much noise, cool this much temperature. That, and that design is the design for an economy that works for all. Yeah. Because it also happens to be a lush and livable place for people. And it's, it's inherently circular uh, it's interesting by design. You, you put, well, I was going to say by design. You actually uh, put me at the post yeah. because it's so fundamental to the circular economy by design, yes. and you're saying let's learn from the natural world's yeah. design to make it circular. Because it's different, you know, it localizes it. It's yeah. going to be a different set of economic opportunities and a different set of circular opportunities depending on where you are. The ecosystem of that place has already figured that out. Mm -hmm.